Are you somebody who struggles with losing weight? Are you someone who's lost weight, but then you maybe gain it back and you can't figure out why? You've tried diets, you feel like you diet and then you end up gaining more weight. Well, I've got some information for you. I'm Dr. Cassie Smith with Modern Endocrine. Make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification button so you can be notified when I drop new content like this if you're interested. So let's talk about weight. So from a medical standpoint, a hormonal standpoint, what is going on? What are some of the reasons? When people come to me and they're complaining of weight gain, here are the things that start going in my head. Have they had hormonal issues recently? Have they been started on some sort of hormone like birth control? Are they transitioning into menopause? So we definitely wanna look at your hormones. The second thing that I think about is insulin. Insulin is the most inflammatory molecule in our body. Unfortunately, 93% of Americans have high fasting insulin levels. This is because we're chronically stressed. We don't make good food choices. Even when we try to make good food choices, there are a lot of processed and ultra processed ingredients in foods that we're not aware of. And so these things along with just chronic stress cause inflammation. And then over time, as we become inflamed, our insulin levels start to go up. When insulin is high, it causes you to retain water and it causes your body to not process your food correctly. So it interferes with your metabolism. So if you are one of the millions of people walking around with an elevated insulin level, which means your fasting insulin is above five, then you are at a huge disadvantage. When you eat, food is turned into glucose, no matter what type of food you eat. Protein turns into less glucose than fat, and carbohydrates turn into the most glucose. Glucose is then taken out of your bloodstream by a molecule called insulin. That's because when glucose is in your bloodstream in high levels, our body senses that as toxic. It doesn't like too much glucose because it causes inflammation and can make things start sticking to our blood vessel wall. So when we eat ultra processed foods or too many carbohydrates or a lot of sugar, our body has to make a lot of insulin. So the insulin can grab onto the glucose and get it out of the bloodstream. When that happens, it sticks it in our skeletal muscle. When our skeletal muscle is full, it then goes to our liver and it tries to put glucose into our liver. Our liver holds glucose so that after the glucose from our skeletal muscle is utilized, then it can get glucose from our liver. And then finally, if our skeletal muscle is full of glucose, and our liver is full of glucose, then the insulin takes our glucose to our fat cells. So when we have a lot of insulin because we're eating maybe the wrong things and our sugar is really high, then a lot of our food ends up stored in our fat cells. When our muscles are depleted of their glucose storage, and our liver is depleted of its glucose storage, a lot of people are not able to use glucose that was stored in our fat cells for energy because of chronic inflammation and because they haven't had their body do that because they're chronically eating. So it makes you hungry, so you eat again. So the whole process starts over. You put glucose into your skeletal muscle, you put it in your liver, and then you put it into your fat. But once you've burned what's put in your skeletal muscle in your liver, let's say 60% of what you ate, that extra 40% is setting in your fat cells, but it's unable to be used, so you get hungry again. So over time, you're gonna keep building up fat stores and being hungry, even though you have all this extra glucose. So we wanna get those insulin levels to come down because that causes you to retain water. It makes you hungry. It's one of the main reasons people have issues losing weight. If I've looked at somebody's hormones and I've looked at their insulin, the other thing I'm curious about are their cortisol levels. So cortisol is our stress hormone as well. If we're chronically stressed because we're working too much, you know, we're trying to starve ourselves with diets, we're not sleeping enough, it causes our cortisol to go up. And oh, by the way, when our cortisol is high, it's more difficult to sleep. It drives our progesterone levels down, which are important hormones in women. That in itself will cause you to be moody and it will also cause you to have very very bad PMS symptom. And when your cortisol is high, it will drive your insulin levels up even higher. So now we've got this issue where our insulin was high, our cortisol's high, our cortisol is driving our insulin to be high, our insulin is driving our cortisol to be high. All of that is making our hormones worse. Because when your insulin is high, it also drives your estrogen down. And estrogen is very important in women as well. It's one of the things that make you not have sugar cravings. So if you're a woman and you're having intense sugar cravings all the time, either your insulin's high and your estrogen's low or both. And again, these are things that can be fixed, but you have to know these are the issues. So I'm thinking about your hormones, I'm thinking about your cortisol, I'm thinking about your insulin. The other thing I'm thinking about is your thyroid. Thyroid is very important when we talk about metabolism and weight. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people that don't understand thyroid very well. 
And so they will get a general blood test, like a TSH level, and they will tell you, oh, it's normal, you're fine. But the important thing to know is that free T3 levels are what's actually important when looking at thyroid hormone and thyroid function. And so if you are somebody who has a low T3 level and you don't feel fine, you may have hypothyroidism, especially if you have issues with your skin and your nails, cold, and you're gaining weight, all of these things, fatigue as well, tell me that your thyroid is not working well. And when your thyroid's not working well, that causes stress. And when you have stress, it increases your cortisol. And when your cortisol's high, it increases your insulin. And when your insulin and cortisol are high, it makes your hormones low. And so we have these multiple feedback loops of all of these hormones that are impeding you from being able to lose weight. So it's like putting a 50 pound weighted vest on you and telling you to walk up a mountain. It's really hard to do that and it's really hard to lose weight when everything metabolically internally inside of you is working against you. The last thing I think about with weight is micronutrients. So there are millions of people walking around with micronutrient deficiencies and that's really important as well. There's a lot of micronutrients that are very important for your metabolism. So you need vitamin D, you need B12, you need B2 and B6. Ferritin is important for your thyroid hormone. So there are lots of micronutrients that you need to have because if you don't have them in adequate values, then your thyroid can't work your metabolism slows down, or you do have more fatigue and it's difficult for you to work out or to complete tasks. These are the things I think about when somebody comes to me and says, I just cannot lose weight. And so all these things can be addressed. The way to address these would all be separate videos. And if you're interested in that, comment below and I'll make some of those videos for you. If you are struggling with weight, some of the levels that you need to have checked are your thyroid levels. You need a full thyroid panel, TSH, free T3, a free T4, a TPO antibody, an iodine level. Because if your iodine is low, your thyroid won't work. The other thing is ferritin. Your ferritin has to be above 70 or your thyroid is not going to be able to function. You also need to know what is your 8 a.m. cortisol level? What is your fasting insulin level? What are your hormone levels? Your FSH, your estradiol, your progesterone, your testosterone. All of these things are very important in addition to vitamin D levels, vitamin B12 levels, folic acid levels, and maybe even cholesterol. All these things will help us determine ways to help you lose weight. If you liked this information, remember, like, comment below, let me know what you liked, what else you wanna know, subscribe, hit the notification button, so you'll be notified whenever I drop new content like this.